Hello Internet, Sky here and our today's hero is the most complex and most successful Embraer's child. Or I can go bigger. The most successful regional airliner in the world for the beginning of 21st century, capable of beating anyone on its field, if not in technical specifications, then certainly in industrial performance. Embraer Ejet is a family of regional airliners developed by the Brazilian aviation conglomerate Embraer in the early 2000s. The family includes models E170, 175, 190 and 195, which will soon give way to second generation of E2 airliners. This team, having appeared relatively recently, has won parks, wallets and hearts of the industry. More than 1400 units have been delivered. The history of this team began not so long ago. The mid-1990s was the very busy period for Embraer. At that time, the company conducted flight tests and was preparing to start supplies of its first airliner, EMB-145, from the future ERJ family. But despite this work, further commercial aircraft line development plans, as well as the projected probabilities of market correction, the possible increase in fuel prices and the potential drop in demand for small jet aircraft at the beginning of the 21st century, forced Embraer to work on the subject of creating a new generation of larger and more efficient aircrafts. In 1997, on the wave of the EMB-145 model success, the company officially announced the creation of a new modification, the Junior 37-seat Model 135. That was the time the ERG family was actually born. However, at the same time, unnoticeably for the most people, the company officials announced the work on a new 70-seat aircraft, which received the name EMB-170. EMB-170 was not intended to be a major breakthrough. In fact, it was a deeply modified ERG-145, equipped with a new wing and an enlarged boss in length and in diameter fuselage, kind of Brazilian version of the Canadian CRJ cigar. The project was to be implemented jointly by Embraer and a consortium of European companies. However, after some time, the Europeans left this project and launched their own program to create a jet regional aircraft based on ATR turboprops. But this idea didn't endure. If you have never seen air jet airliners at the airports, you are not mistaken. The ATR jet never appeared. However, this fact didn't make Embraer's life easier. The project, costing about half a billion dollars, was left hanging on them alone. Then engineers started to work on the design. In 1999, the idea of creating a modification of the ERG-145 was already considered unsuccessful. Too many limitations were imposed by the technology and the design of this aircraft, which in fact was created on the basis of another machine, the AMB-120 turboprop. It was decided to use only the most advanced technology and to create the aircraft itself practically from scratch. Officially, the start of the E-Jet program was announced at the Paris Air Show in the summer of 1999. The company's market department decided to shift the range of dimensions of the line by offering two aircrafts at once – Junior ERJ-170 and Senior ERJ-190. Being an already proven manufacturer, in Paris, Embraer received first orders for the future planes. The Europeans ordered 70 aircrafts with options for another 100. The work went very fast. A year after the announcement, Embraer had already started assembling prototypes. In the fall of 2001, the first assembled aircraft was rolled out at the Embraer main factory at the airport of San Jose dos Campos near São Paulo. The aircraft made its maiden flight on February 19, 2002. The Embraer 170 model was created first, and those planes passed an intensive test and certification program. The test continued until 2004 and resulted in the reception of tight certificates directly from the aviation administrations of Brazil, the European Union and the United States. So what are these planes supposed to be? Let's take a look. Embraer 170, like its older brother, that later formed the E-Jet family, has a classic layout for commercial airliners. An airplane with the turbofan engines suspended on pylons under the low wing. However, such a layout, common for most commercial airliners, was exotic for small regional planes. 
Embraer tried to apply it while developing the ERJs, but those 50-seat planes were too small. However, they did not abandon this idea and implemented it on already larger E-Jet, as we know quite successfully. There are two models in the family. The basic ones are E-170 and E-190. On their basis, larger versions 175 and 195 respectively were created. Avionics, onboard systems and structural elements for all the aircraft are unified approximately by 90% which, considering the production volumes, gave the company a bunch of bonuses. Power plant, two General Electric CF-34 turbofans. E-Jet uses two modifications. CF-34-8E with a thrust of 63 kN for the lighter guys and CF-34-10E with a thrust of 89 kN for the heavier guys. The engines accelerate those planes to speed of nearly 500 miles per hour and rise them to classic 41,000 feet. The range is also not particularly epic, but it is quite optimal for modern regional travel and revolves around the mark of 4,000 km. The fuselage cross-section is not round, but rather oval. Really, this is already a common practice, but if on large airliners it is not easily noticeable, on the E-Jets it's enough to just look at its face. The fuselage width slightly oversteps 3 meters, which gives passengers a cabin with width of 274 cm or 9 feet. Not a record, but quite decent. The light for this width is appropriate, 4 seats in a row. So let's go on. It is a family, we have to see all its members. The E-170 was quite popular, even though it was immediately positioned as the youngest model in the family. In the basic one-class configuration, the airplane accommodates 72 passengers and 66 in the two-class configuration. By the beginning of 2018, about 190 machines saw the sky. However, due to the changes in the market conditions and the pressure from competitors, at the moment the production of these aircraft has particularly ceased. As it turned out, Embraer did not quite guess with the light of the E-170. The customers required a slightly modified version. Engineers quickly made a modification. In 2005, Embraer launched the E-175. It was very close to the ancestor, equipped with the same power plant, but received a 1.8 meters longer fuselage. It accommodates 78 passengers in the one-class configuration and 76 passengers in the two-class configuration. This version was more successful and enjoyed much more demand. If the E-170 was delivered in quantities of about 190 units, the E-175 passed the mark of 490 and is still being produced. Embraer 190 made its mining flight in the spring of 2004. At the end of the same year, the largest plane of the family E-175 began its flights. Technically, being the E-170 modifications, the planes quickly passed certification and in 2005 they were already being supplied to the operators. The flagship models of the family not only had stretched fuselage, but also slightly enlarged tails and wingspan. The E-190 model accommodates 100 passengers in a one-class configuration and 96 in a two-class configuration. The aircraft has a fuselage longer than 36 meters, 6 meters more than the E-170. The largest model, E-195, is also 2.5 meters longer, which allows to accommodate up to 116 passengers in a one-class configuration and 100 in a two-class version. E-190 became the most popular member of the family. The airliners fly more than 540 planes. Model E-195, being the largest and most expensive aircraft, at the time seemed too large for the class and delivered in a quantity of about 160 units. Of course, Embraer has not abandoned the tradition of creating business jets based on its commercial aircrafts. In 2007, the first flights of the linear Southland aircraft was made. It was created on the basis of the E-190 model and, due to its dimensions, was immediately assigned to the class of large business jets. The aircraft can accommodate up to 90 passengers, and flies at a distance of up to 8,500 km. With a cost of more than $60 million, the aircraft nevertheless did not become very popular. 
and Brad produces only a few jets per year, so there are only about two or three dozens of them in total. Embraer started the deliveries of the E-170 in 2004. Initial operator was the Polish Lot airline. The first E-175 went to the fleet of Air Canada in 2005. The production and supplies of the airliners were a record for Embraer and surprised other market participants quite a bit, and even now they are surprising. In the peak periods before the 2008 crisis, Embraer achieved production rates of 150-160 aircrafts per year. Already in 2008, the 400th plane of the family left the plant. In September 2013, nine years after the beginning of deliveries, Embraer celebrated the transfer of thousands jet to the customer. Even in the middle of 2010s, when the aircraft became obsolete and the market expected to the second generation E-Jet E-2, Embraer continued to supply about 100 aircrafts, collecting orders for a new generation. At the beginning of 2018, more than 1400 E-Jets were delivered. Safety performance of the aircrafts is very high, also not so awesome as with the ERJ. During the operations, six incidents occurred. Four of them were basically unpleasant events, such as rolling out the runway, without casualties. But two cases were not so lucky. The first accident occurred in China in 2010, when the aircraft, in dense of fog at night, made an unsuccessful landing, rolled out the runway and collapsed, killing 42 people. The second crash occurred in Africa in 2013. In flight, when the co-pilot left the cockpit for a while, the captain blocked the door and committed suicide by crushing the aircraft. All 34 people on board were killed. A horrible story, but unfortunately it happens too. Despite the great success, the pressure from the new competitors such as C-Series, SSG-100 and future MRJ did not allow Brazilians to relax. And they will not leave the throne. Already at the beginning of 2018, the successors of the E-Jet family, the newest second-generation E-Jet E-2, will begin to fly. And we will talk about these planes next time. This is it for today, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Fast flights and soft landings to you.